now. So most of these effects are that. They're effects that you put on to process audio. But when you're dealing with your MIDI controller, you're going to want to use a special kind of – it's not an effect. It's a software instrument, right? So you can play the keys on your controller and actually trigger um, sounds and actually play them. And that's living under the instrument menu here. Um, now, so let's say you want to play one of these. There's something called a mini grand, and you can probably figure out that's a grand piano. Yeah. So say you want to play that guy, all right? Well, we cannot use any of the tracks that we have in here right now to do that. So I can't put one of those software instruments on an audio track and go, then go play it with my MIDI controller. It doesn't work that way. So we have to go to a different track for that to happen. So the only tracks we've really dealt with so far are the audio track, and then we dealt with the master fader. So we're going to go look at another one. And in fact, we're going to look at two. And I'm going to save this one of the more difficult ones for probably for next week. Okay. The first one is a MIDI track. All right, so we're going to go ahead and make a MIDI track. Now, what do you know, if anything, about MIDI at this point? Nothing. nothing. Okay. All right, very, the concept of MIDI, um, it can get very complicated, but it's, conceptually it's fairly simple. Um, you can think of MIDI like, if you know it, like an old school player piano, you know what I'm talking about, where they have like the rolls of music that, pull, you know, that people do and they, they play and it actually moves the keys on the piano. Does that make sense? Okay. Yep, yep. That's a basically the, the roll that has the holes punched in it is basically what MIDI is. It's a description of what the instrument should play. So whenever you grab your MIDI controller and you start pressing keys, you are not sending out audio in any way, shape, or form. You're sending out, basically it's a computer language that's describing the notes that you're playing. And it has to be fed to some type of instrument that can create sound. So now when we're dealing with MIDI, we're never dealing with audio. You can't record audio into a MIDI track. It's literally binary little pieces of information that say you press the C note and then we have to feed that to an instrument that can actually make that note. In other words, what we're about to do is I'm going to make a MIDI track, I'm going to play some notes on my MIDI controller, and I can record those into the MIDI track, and then we're going to send the MIDI track to go play that piano, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I'll make this MIDI track, and in fact, I'm going to make two tracks here. And I can do that by clicking on this little plus button over to the right here where I've got a, now I can make multiple tracks of different types. So in other words, in this case, I'm going to make a MIDI track. And this is the setup if you want to play one of those instruments that are in Pro Tools. You're going to make two tracks, at least for now. There's another way you can do this, but we're going to start here because it's going to make more sense. Um, you create a MIDI track, and you create something called an aux input track. And at this point, I'm not even going to talk about the aux track. I'm just going to say make it. <laughs> so. When you, when you want to play a device, you make two of these guys. And I, for right now, pretty much always make it a stereo aux track. Okay, yeah, MIDI okay. is not mono or... Oh, go ahead. Uh, when, when, when should you be using mono? Um, you should be using mono if the sound source is mono. So for instance, if you're going to record your vocal, okay, you should always make a mono track for that. Because you are, you know, you're using one microphone. If you're using two microphones, then maybe make a stereo track, but make one. If, here would be, here's an example. If we were going to use this MIDI track to play a bass guitar, okay, a bass guitar is a mono instrument generally, right? Then I would probably make a mono track for that, or a flute or something like that. That's a mono instrument. Now, piano a lot of the times is stereo. So in other words, when I play down at the bottom keys, that may come out the left speaker, and as I play up the keys, it's going to like pan across the stereo field and start coming out the right speaker. That's kind of a, a stereo thing. Um, most of the time, honestly, when you're dealing with instruments, you're going to be dealing with stereo stuff. Uh, but if you're recording your, you're recording your, your vocal, and you're recording your voice, that's always just always a mono track. But in Pro Tools, when you're dealing with these instruments, so many of them are stereo. It's not going to hurt. I'll put it like that, just to leave it as a stereo track. Okay. Um, so we make a stereo aux track, and I'll just hit Create. We're going to get both of them down here. And Fairly simple. Here's what we're going to do. If you remember, we saw those instruments hiding out as inserts that we could get to. And I'm going to put one of those on this aux track. And I'll just go ahead and choose, for now, since I mentioned the mini grand, we'll just go ahead and choose this. And it's a pretty good sounding grand piano. And there it is. It's pretty. So it takes a minute to load up because it's got a pretty large sample library with this. Um, and in fact, we can trigger it just by hitting the keyboard down here. Oh, nice. All right. So instead of doing that, though, we want to use our MIDI controller to control this keyboard, which is what we're going to do. 
So I'm going to go ahead and close this piano by clicking the little X at the upper left of it. It doesn't mean the piano's gone away. It just means I'm not seeing it anymore. It's still inserted on the track. You see where it says Mini Grand. Mm -hmm. And here's how you pull this off. There's only one more step we have to do for me to be able to play this with my keyboard. And that's we have to go to my MIDI track. And I've got to somehow figure out a way to send the notes that I play on my keyboard from this track to the Mini Grand Piano. And you do that by changing the output of the track. If I click on the I.O. of this track, you notice where it says I.O. That stands for Input Output. And if you hover your mouse over it, it kind of tells you what's going on. Um, for the most part, you don't ever want to mess with the input to a MIDI track. Just leave it. It says All. That means if you plug, no matter how many MIDI interfaces you have plugged in your computer, it's going to take input from any of those into this track. So you don't have to worry about being selective. You could use both your keyboards, and they would both work. And so just leave it. The output is the key thing. Where do we want? What do we want our keyboard to play? And in this case, we only have one option, so it's pretty easy. Um, the mini grands. So any instrument that you insert on a track is going to show up as an option for the output of your MIDI track, okay. which is pretty cool. And I'm going to select it. And so now, the, again, it's just a review. The signal routing is I'm going to play my keyboard. It's going to come into the input of this track because I have selected, I just left it to all. I didn't mess with it. And it's going to be sent out to control this grand piano. And I'm, turn this down a little bit here. I blew myself out. And if I play, it works now, okay? okay. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay, just checking. And if I wanted to record, so I'll jump over to the edit view here. And I've got my, my MIDI track. I've got a whole bunch of tracks here at this point. And I'm going to show you how to show and hide tracks and all that kind of good stuff. But uh, if I want to record my performance, say I want to record over this drum loop. This is going to sound atrocious, but hey. Um, I just record enable the MIDI track. And that's going to allow me to record MIDI information into Pro Tools. In other words, it's going to record the notes that I play on my keyboard. Yeah, it has the actual uh, key on the side, so you know that it's the grand. I'm sorry, say that one more time? It's got like keys on the side of that track? Yes, absolutely. So you can actually, it's really, the, it's, it's a reference to what note you actually played in the track. So much stuff you can do with this. But all I did was hit record, okay? I record enabled my track, and I went, and hit record in the transport, and you just you just hit record and then play is how this works. Um, kind of like a, a cassette deck, basically, where you hit record and play at the same time. And it recorded, and there's those notes I played, and if I play them back, it played the notes back. So it's pretty much that simple. Now, yeah, so there they are. Now, we can go in and edit these. If we mess the timing of them up, we can move them around. If I played a wrong pitch, I can go move it around. So MIDI is so much more flexible than audio because, remember, these MIDI notes are not actual audio. They're just describing what I played. So I can very easily jump in here and see them and just grab one note. And you hear the note when you click on it and drag it up or down and just move one note out of a chord and change it. Or maybe I didn't like that note, I can delete it. Or maybe I wanted it to be longer, I can use the trim tool and make it longer. So you can get, get in there and really tweak things out and fix your crappy performance, or in this case, my crappy performance, <laughs> and make you sound like a genius. Wow. Um, but yeah, so MIDI is way more flexible. If you're doing drums, um, we'll look at some of the drum plugins. You can make a drum beat and totally suck, and that's OK, because you can go fix it very, very easily. Now, Which I is what most people do. Yo. I got a question for you, but it, it's kind of outside of the scope of what you're teaching me. I know that, but I know I have, uh, like, I'm, like I said, I've been getting ready to do all this stuff for years, and I've got a lot of equipment that I bought. One piece mm -hmm. of equipment that I bought is actually an MPC. Uh, really? So, yes. So I have the MPC. Uh, it's a two uh, MPC one thousand. So mm -hmm. that actually has MIDI on the back of it. So I can yeah. pull my samples and stuff into that and actually fire away on the, the pads. And actually, I guess, uh, the sound would come out in here. How well, the, there's a couple things that you can do with that MPC, actually. You could hook that MPC up to Pro Tools, 